Hello world, this is Random Picks, and if you have a lithium iron phosphate battery assembled and you hate the hardware that it came with, which are these basic bolts that go into the aluminum, well they actually really suck. So in this video today we're actually going to be removing the bolts, we're going to be putting studs in. So whether your battery bank is built or it hasn't been built I'm going to show you how to do it and it's really easy you're going to need some basic tools so we're going to need a 10 millimeter deep socket and also just a regular size socket some bolt cutters which unless you got really great bolt cutters are not going to work and then you're going to go ahead and need some six millimeter nuts some six millimeter dash 1.00 25 millimeter long bolts here and basically we're going to go ahead and cut the top of the bolt off and make it into a stud and then you need an angle grinder and in case you're watching this video and you happen to strip your actual stud and you don't know what to do I'm going to tell you guys in this kit right here this came with symmetric bolt so I actually went with the next size up and it came with the bolt as well and this works so I've actually made this mistake before so in case you run into it you just put a seven millimeter in and grab the correct bolt for it and you would be good so fear not so now let's go ahead and undo these and we'll start putting our actual studs in and get this battery nice and tight because this when it's actually in the vehicle I notice that she shifts a little bit so after time this is not going to be as effective as the actual stud and this is the actual problem guys look at this see how these two bolts are actually the different sizes the one that actually came with was even shorter so this one barely reaches this one may reach too much and so you're not getting a really secure fit with the stud you're going to come with the bolt top down and it's going to always work next we're going to take this bolt here with the actual nut on there the nut's very important because once we cut the top of this off we're going to use the nut to go ahead and give us some decent thread so we can go ahead and put this back on Now we're going to go ahead and use a half inch ratchet and get this nice and tight and make sure you stay vertical to it and don't go in sideways because that will actually mess you up and do not over torque this you'll feel it get nice and snug and do the same on this one make sure you're applying force from the top too and now that these are nice and tight I'm going to go ahead and cut the top of these off now. So each cell has a bolt through there and a nut. Okay, so bolt has been retrieved. Now on to the next one. Second cutoff was successful. Now we're going to actually back the bolt up. And when you're backing the bolt up now, it's going to go ahead and re-thread your stud just in case anything was damaged. So there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and just put in everything kind of loose so I can go ahead and tie this down later on and you want to make sure that the main lug goes first 
and this wire right here this is on a XT60 quick connect on here and what I actually like to do is go ahead and run this to the negative and the other one to the positive so anytime I actually want to bypass the BMS I can if I need to go ahead and do some sort of weird maintenance these cells are so big so I might need to go ahead and top balance these every couple of years and the only reason I can actually go that long without having to worry about this even on a daily basis is because this active BMS right here and this basically goes and equalizes all your cells because the actual one that I have here the 100 amp BMS cannot handle a battery this big so when I started using this I could see the world of difference so if you guys haven't watched my battery assembly video check that out this is a lifesaver right here for your bigger battery banks like these 280 amp hour lithium ion phosphate batteries So everything's complete. I got my charger set up here so I can basically bypass the BMS anytime I want to. And this is a perfect example, guys, of making sure that you top balance correctly when the battery is completely assembled and you got the tape and the enclosure set up. Because this was one of my very first batteries. And honestly, I went ahead and top balanced the cells while they're separate. You always want to make sure they're compressed because these pouches basically expand out and even though this battery will last me many many years you want to make sure that you guys watch my very first video where I show you guys how to do this from start to finish so I'm going to go ahead and tighten everything up and then I'm going to go and put this back together and get use out of this thank you again so much for watching if you guys want to learn how to use the app for the BMS here the JBD app thank you again so much and we look forward to and I, look, and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. And if you need any questions with anything, you'll find links in the description box. And please don't hesitate to go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. If you guys are brand new to the channel, consider subscribing. As I always make content that's aimed to help you guys out, save money, and get it done and do it yourself. One last helpful tip. On any of these studs right here, where there's no wires connected to them, what you want to do is put a flat washer down before the locking washer so that way the locking washer doesn't actually get stuck in here and in case you need any sort of assistance with getting the bus bars to fit because of things like this you can go ahead and just file a little bit of the way you can go ahead and file a little bit of the actual bus bar on the inside corner and it will allow you to go ahead and get everything to fit I hope you enjoyed this video on how to go ahead and make studs for your battery pack and you want to make sure you guys check out the whole video series here because there's a total of seven videos and I'm going to show you guys all the things you want to go ahead and avoid and video number seven is going to be about troubleshooting so check out all the different videos as I try to make them short and simple for you guys. And you guys will also find links to anything that I showcase in the video in the description box down below and on video number seven i'll show you about the shopping and how to save the most amount of money by planning ahead thank you guys we'll see you on the next video